All right, let's go. Oh, let's uh, go. Time to get some coffee. And get some gaming news. A little bit of a recap. There we go. All right, one second camera. Come on, get the camera. There we go. And there we go. Done. There it is. All right. Good. And I also have some more of this. Feels good, man. Feels good, eh? <clears throat> so funny, a wireen, a wireen. All right, get some water, get some coffee. It was like my grandma on Tuesday, and my foot is still not fully recovered. So that that adventure there made it kind of hurt again. So yesterday, instead of going on the culinary adventures with my friend, eh, that we're going to do next week. And this week, instead, I decided just to order some, some foodies. Eh, got me some pizza, got me some sushi. Kind of funny how that stuff is always, almost always in the same places. That's like such a standard... Eh, set of things here so it's such popular things to order but usually places have both so people can get both things they like in one place most of the time it means that it's garbage though but this place is actually kind of cool they're both like really nice like kind of not very super usual pizzas there You know, the classic stuff too, but also like some, you know, like ding stuff with like with some pear, you know, something like mortadella, ham and everything. And they have some nice stuff there. And the sushi rolls they have are really interesting too. And some I had that. Or with like some slices of, like wrapped in the slices of strawberry and everything. And it all actually tastes really good. Huh? Oh, real nice. And it's not super expensive. Huh? And if you order for 20 bucks, you get another pizza for free. But I still have that free pizza to consume. Huh? Well, now after this is going to be half of the free pizza, but still, still, hey, Jelly, hello, how are we doing? Let's go. Yeah, if you order for like... 20 euro basically you get one piece for free and just margarita and stuff but you know free This economy hell yeah well for us it's just like a lot anyway i was reading article yesterday my friend is a chef right and i got like an article recommended to me uh from some like 
how you say like the restaurant investor restaurant holder dude with multiple ones right and bro that was just like pain to read i was like just like linked it and was just like showing like throwing some quotes from there to my friend and he was like molding and the dude was complaining well no no one wants to work as a cook as a chef you know we have such big problems finding people who are yeah, uh, who are ready to work as a chef and stuff and then he's like well yeah usually you know the cook's uh, salary is like three dollars per hour and stuff but we can't make it more we can't make it like five dollars per hour because then every dish should cost like you know uh 20 bucks each like the fuck dude what are you talking about there like they have money to open like like we have investors who want to open you know like three new restaurants a year but we don't have enough like chefs to work there like bro how about you invest that money not in you know opening new restaurants like open two instead of three but get like decent salaries to people then they will work <laughs> right now if you earn like 800 bucks or something per month here as a as a cook you're a god like my friend can get more for for example but that would mean you know just like a working crazy amount more <clears throat> minimum wage per hour nope uh, minimal wage per month only and then it's also always kind of goes you know in this kind of like uh none of the people almost get official salary you know like you get either you are completely unofficially working or you work officially only with like the minimal salary and the rest you get an envelope And at the same time, you know, you like blast you. Well, I mean, right now my friend actually found the spot where he's not really uh, molding about it. Like, yeah, sure, it's like 800 bucks, but he works like four hours a day. Maybe a bit more because he just goes in quickly, you know. Like, it's like the the cold kitchen, whatever it's called. He just kind of like prepares everything for cooking and stuff. So he just goes in with his super fucking sharp as knife. And just prepares everything in a few hours and then he off home. Like the only time I think he like sits there longer is like Friday or something. Uh, just because the delivery of like fish is kind of late for some reason. Like they're always bringing it like 4 p.m. or something. So he sits there all day like doing nothing pretty much just waiting for that shit. But other days he just kind of like goes in three four hours he's done back home. So with that schedule, he doesn't really mind earning 50. 50,000, I mean, in our currency, right? But if he wouldn't want to, like, get, like, 70, 90 or something, it's like, 1,000 bucks or something, he would need to work, like, 13-hour shifts. And that would be, like, around, uh, well, at least four of those per week. And he's like, nope, I ain't getting that. <laughs> 12 per hour is minimal, I see. And yes, it's only per month, and uh, the minimal is, like, laughable. Like, minimal is, like, I don't know, like, 200 bucks, I think, minimal nowadays or something. Like, Moscow has its own minimal, but, like, the this, the country general kind of minimal is, like, 200 bucks, basically, per month. <laughs> And then at the same time, there are like, you know, a waiters, for example, like I was going on Tuesday home in the, on the tram and there was a dude uh, like talking on the phone. Like, oh, I, I, I think, I think today I should get like hundred. Well, if the day will be bad, then 50 bucks probably or something like as tips, basically. And then telling the story how like one day, like some dude arrived with like a couple of million in his wallet. And he just kind of like, you know, left how much, like 400 bucks, I think, or something is, is, is just a tip for him. And then dude was also complaining because that guy later got drunk and like broke some bottles or something. So he asked him to pay from the tip that he gave him. He was even molding at him like, yo, bro, it's my tip already. <clears throat> and they like never share it with the, with cooks or something. So you basically... 
get all that for yourself. Which is also kind of promoted in the restaurants because the salary for the waiter is like nothing. They get like the very minimal, like 200 bucks per month or something. And the rest is supposed to farm with tips. Like some small restaurants or restaurants with like business lunch and stuff. They don't like working because, you know, business lunch people just go in to eat as cheap as possible. They don't want to pay you a tip. Like the whole, the whole lunch is kind of like three tips basically in the amount, you know. <laughs> they don't want to pay you shit. Hey, Corsad, hello. How you doing, man? But yeah, like the, the restaurant and like the food production industry is fucked completely here. And then at the same time, you have like this like place where where we go, uh, where the people from Uzbekistan work. We've got a little diner there where all the taxi drivers eating and stuff. And bro, it's like really good quality, really good price. So like you can't you can do it that way if you want something with reasonable price and good quality. You don't go for some hyper profits and stuff. But here we basically have like the definition of corporate here. Everyone wants to get like 300% profit instantly. A burger nowadays here, like where my friend works, burger is like 10 bucks, basically. <laughs> That's literally like two buns, which are like well, even if you buy them, they are like very cheap. No, like, like, okay, not, not super. If you buy kind of fancy ones, if you buy even, not even like make on your own, right? Which is way cheaper. Even then, it's gonna be like, like four sets of bonds, gonna be like, I don't know, like 200 basically. So 50 per each. Like the, the patty is like 200 grams, usually, I guess, the standard. Even if you get like some. Like marble beef, you know, like black Angus or something there. It's still gonna be like probably 200 in our currency, right? So 250. And then like pickles, ketchup, you know, a slice of cheese and stuff like this. Like, bro, it, it can't cost like more than like, I don't know, 500. And that's a huge stretch. <laughs> they already sell for 700. Not to mention like, I doubt a lot of places like this, they put actual, you know, marble beef in. Or it's like, you know, kind of like... It is Black Angus beef, but it's like, you know, some part that no one, like, uses that is garbage, that is, like, too, you know, like... chewy to do something else with it, so they just, like, grind it. <clears throat> so it is, like, technically Black Angus marble beef, but it's totally not, like, some rebuy or something they get into the grinder. Yes, they, yeah. Well, I mean, to be honest, they don't complain. Let's be real. Like, where my friend works, like, he's the one molding all the time. Because he just kind of, like, you know, he studied. He worked, like, for a shitload of time already. He worked, at some point, he worked on two works, even. And two jobs. And one, he was working, like, pretty much for free. Just because they had, like, really good, interesting menus. So he was kind of, like, you know, just, like, got an opportunity to study that stuff. And uh, the person who owned that restaurant, uh, she was also friends with one of our big, like, chef, blogger, and, you know, like, the restaurant owner. So my friend actually, like, know, like knows him, right? Like, he cooked with him in the same kitchen, right? You know, like, held hands with him and everything. So he was just going there just to kind of study all this. Like, they had, like, all this, like, all the fancy stuff, right? Like, the... Molecular uh, cuisine, you know, sous vide, all that kind of stuff. Like, they were making some, like, <laughs> super fancy shit there. So, you're, like, learning and getting experience and stuff. And working a shitload of time. And then there's, like, some, you know, like, part-time dude who's going there after, like, you know, university or something. Like 18 years old or even less, you know, who just like goes there for the evening and he earns like in one evening, like the amount that my friend made in the week in the kitchen, right? Like just like in sweat running around cooking that stuff real quick. And he's like, bro, 
What the fuck? <clears throat> the only thing he said sometimes is some people who are like more exquisite, I guess, sometimes they uh, they specifically like send uh, uh, tips to the, to the to the chef. Like he added sometimes, uh, like not not to the waiter. They're like, please, uh, like pass it to chef. Like really good food and everything. But that happens like almost never. Mostly people just like leave the tip and they kind of just assume, you know, it's already like gonna be like shared somehow. Nope, almost never. The only time I think it's shared is when it's like some sort of like, you know, corporate dinner they do, some celebrations, or when they pay for like the banquet basically, right? And then like all the extra stuff usually gets shared among everyone who was working there. That's why he likes those, huh? because that's decent money. You know, you know, he doesn't even wor want to work. Like he was offered already to be like sous chef, to be a chef, and he just like, bro, like, I'm gonna get like maybe thirty percent more money, but like I'm gonna like forget what the weekend is, or what the day off is completely, and I'm not ready right now for that. <clears throat> like he's more of a kind who would rather, you know, just like save some money and then never work ever. Or usually he just like works for some time and then and then has like a few months of chill when he just spends the money that he saved without working. He always gets invited like somewhere, so like they know he worked good, so and whenever he gets this free moment. He always gets called back. Even though apparently some of the people here does not well, I mean, some some owners of the restaurants here don't like him. Probably those guys who he exposed, eh? that they're doing some big sus stuff and their kitchen is like completely unsanitary. So they don't like him, but they still once called him back though. Because like it or not, <laughs> there's not a lot of professionals working in this line of job. Like for like someone noob, right from like the, you know, like the college, the gymnasium or something who studied as a cook, they usually kind of, or just like in general students, they like go either waiter or something, or they go in something like McDonald's or something, which actually, if you're going to work like full 40 hour week in McDonald's here, you're going to earn like my friend earns in a proper restaurant, basically. <laughs> you're going to work like crazy though, but yeah, a lot of people just go there. Instead, and then they all surprised the way there is no cooks and chefs and everything, because no one fucking works wants to work with such salary. Especially considering you know amount of work you need to put. And there was some time, like, one or two years, we haven't seen him, like, whatsoever. He just disappeared. I was working two jobs and everything. So, like, we just, literally, like, for a couple of years, we just, like, lost the dude completely. And since then, he's not really looking forward to that. And the funny part that also like in those like one or two years uh, when he worked like crazy, like, you know, it's not like you go on a super grind and then you come out of that grind with like an apartment, right? Or like a car or something. No, nothing. <laughs> I guess he got like, like the barbecue area on his father's uh, countryside house made and, uh, the good barbecue grill he got, PlayStation 5 I guess he got, after that already, way after that kinda. Mm. That's kinda it, didn't upgrade his PC yet, he's saving for that now. So like bro, two years of giga grind, and then he basically just spent it anyway on like some, 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 some dumb stuff.
Yes, Davey, yeah, that's that's normal. And dude who was talking on the phone was even like, well, we have this, like the regular guy, uh, who always did like like the regular regular guy, not even because you know he comes often or something, but regular guy because he tips regularly and well, and they will love him a lot. And then when he started like bitching about something, and barman like you know told him to chill, he basically beat the barman. And now nah, he's still, you know, they everyone's favorite regular because he tips well. <laughs> Barman was wrong, you know, like, bro, you see who it is? Like, shut the fuck up. You know, Barman also, like, everyone was mad at the Barman in the end because, you know, they all want those tips. So maybe he was in the right even, but now no tips. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of such model, I guess. I mean, in some, like, industries and stuff, it's kind of, like, the only sort of way, I guess, to do it. Like, with streaming, for example, right? Content creation, like, you rely on people kind of supporting you, right? But also, you, you don't, like, personally serve them or something, right? You just, like, kind of... It's kind of more like not the tips as someone tips you for like service. It's more kind of like the garage sale or something, right? You just kind of like put your content out there and some people just kind of, you know, they, they, they found this content kind of nice, so they kind of okay with paying for that. <clears throat> It should be optional. That's the thing. You make them you make them optional, they become mandatory. It's just how it works. Like if tips exist, then everything gonna like kinda build around them. Like it should be either like some sort of like service fee that is included in um, the receipt basically already, right? And then split among everyone. Or it shouldn't even be a thing, really. Just, like, include proper salaries for everyone in the price of the dish, right? And now we have those overpriced dishes here. And they technically include only, like, the chef, basically. Because, like, waiters all live on tips. But they're still increasing the prices, though. It could be nice if you could just like, you know, well, I just like, like to really like the service and stuff. And I want to, you know, thank the people who are working here for now, right now. But yeah, in the long run, it might also kind of create a situation when like waiters and stuff, they're going to be just like, yeah, hunting. Like, you know, it's some, some table with like rich people. It's mine. No, it's mine, you know. But yeah, I think like if you pay well and develop the culture and stuff, then people will be kind of like, Way, working way better. And treat everyone well, you know. And rather get some sort of like recommendation thingy. That may be better. So you can like, you know, rate the, the person basically. How did you like the food? How did you like, you know, the service? And the people probably will be kind of like, well, actually, people can automatically usually just put like good, good reviews, right, on everything. But if something is bad, though, then they're going to do the bad one. And then you already know, oh, huh? something's wrong there. And then you just kind of like give bonuses to people, I guess, depending on their performance and stuff. Then at least they would be motivated to work good, like all the time with everyone, not just with someone who's rich, you know. I, mean, I don't even know really how it's like the, the standard tips nowadays here. Around 10% too, I think. I don't remember. Kind of expected one, you know. And it's like when it's like 
some delivery, for example, and they also expect, you know, the tip and stuff. Like, bro, I paid for delivery already. I ain't planning to tip or something. You just, like, literally did what you've been paid for. You just, like, came here, passed me the bag or something. Like, why? And it's not, like, insane feat, you know, achievement. <clears throat> I'm just getting here. It was like yesterday, I think the, the delivery pizza and stuff was like <clears throat> the girl in the delivery. It's kind of like pretty like hot, you know. I'm not sure maybe it's like some like some of the workers there or something, or maybe like I don't know someone's like daughter, sister, wife or something. On them just kind of like to save on like the delivery drivers or something. I don't know, like because kind of like Wednesday in the middle of the week, kind of like low season, right? I Man, the girl delivering the pizza and like she's like already like gave me all the stuff and she's kind of like you know slow and like hesitant to move. <laughs> I'm like, you know, close the door, goodbye. <clears throat> nope. I paid for this shit. I paid for delivery. Nope. Like in proper like deliveries of like groceries and stuff nowadays they're so in a rush that they usually that they don't even like ask or something like you don't expect anything and basically my friend is like looking for a job now too and he's considering also going to like a local a amazon which is called a zone um because you know pretty decent money there but it's when you go ham so like they usually to earn thousand like eight hundred thousand bucks per month you need to get like 50 to 70 deliveries a day so you basically kind of like pull monk steer all day and you don't have time to like wait for someone or for something like two or three euro on the restaurant and that's what i did like in europe yeah and, like you get the the receipt and just like adding like a couple of euro and done more like rounding up yeah i guess also like if it's like 17 18 or something just round it up and you usually get like a truck you get like it loaded and you just go objects you know on the route if you get 50 70 delivered and then you're gonna get like thousand bucks per month and those jobs are also pretty brutal but they pay quite well and there's always people required them so they're really really popular now without requiring anything from you like warehouses deliver deliveries yeah covid kind of brought that line of work real hard hey kagi hello i see i see <clears throat> resources and stuff You right, let's go, um, pretty round, pretty round, eh? as always, eh? as always, eh? <coughs> nothing new on that front. I see, I see, nice, nice. What the beta? All right, ready for rush. Oh, ready for rush. Postur. There we go. Come on. 
the induction for two days. Eh? It's taking a while to load now. There's the timeline. <coughs> And do it. There we go. <coughs> Are you right? Now for the king too, um uh, Unity released this uh, financial results for the three months ended March thirty first, twenty twenty three, with strong revenues for the quarter but losses on the rise year on year. And they just like cut 600 people because of that. Amazing. Amazing. The usual. Profits rising. Growth growth and everything. But yeah, no. We're still gonna fire a bunch of people. Yeah, fire the manager because uh, she said they're out of touch. Well, to be honest, like the uh, I saw like the, the manager was also posting a bunch of Pipiga stuff on uh, her Twitter, so, you know, kind of like, doesn't make them less out of touch, but uh, that that uh, being fired was more kind of like, uh, play stupid games, win stupid prizes, you know, this kind of stuff. Last financial year, Bandai Namco released 62 games. What? Who? The total sales of which are over 48 million copies. Uh, the most popular, the most, the biggest market for them became Europe. You now there was like some, maybe like some packages of remasters. Yeah, maybe mobile stuff there. That's a lot though. Don't even know. A Sharp announces it's making LCD displays for a new console. Could that be the new PlayStation 5 handheld, eh? Hey, Blakey. Now, Nintendo is planning to uh, make more uh, TV adaptations of their games, eh? So they sure, they sure did like how Mario performed then. Crafton in the latest report about the first quarter of the year told about the successes of PUBG, but Callisto Protocol is not even in the report. Damn son, was it that bad? <clears throat> was it actually that bad? In a fresh report, Konami uh, marks that uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Kawabonga collection showed itself really well. And that's why we're gonna get a whole a bunch of... Uh, what's the name? The remasters. More and more. Oh, and Mortal Kombat 1 leaks as a reboot of the franchise. Yeah, they dropped the teaser yesterday with this, like, the clock going, you know, <laughs> jumping past 12 and going to 1, so... Makes sense, makes sense. Mortal Kombat 1 being made for PS5, Xbox Series, PC, and Switch. Still for Switch, even. Skipping last generation, but still going on Switch. All right. Mojang announced uh, the, the release of the first early version of the next big update for Minecraft. It's like releases soon, eh? Bungie Land's third lawsuit in one week against cheat makers. That sound becomes, becomes quite tricky nowadays, I see. Which is a good thing, though. Fuck the cheap makers and everything. But the problem is, I'm kind of afraid that it's gonna go for some other things after too, like Nintendo likes to do, for example, like the emulator makers, you know, mod makers and stuff.
Uh, Devolver is hosting Devolver Direct in June. Well, I assume it's also going to be at the same the same time as uh, all the other stuff. Yeah, apparently, GTA 6 might be the most expensive game in history. How much did they give? Like, they estimate like around billion or two dollars or something. That's insane, dude. Eh? David Yaffe, the creator of Twisted Metal and game designer of God of War, is discussing rumors about Bloodborne, and uh, many people decided that it's the, uh, the inside info. So he clarified that he doesn't know anything about Bloodborne and just telling someone else's words. Eh? How did you give in for base version? I think they're actually kind of not going to probably pump the base version too hard. Uh, because that's like basically for them making the game too expensive is like raising the bar for people getting into the GTA Online, and GTA Online is where they're gonna actually farm the money in the end. No, oh, then the rate, the rating, uh, the. The ladders uh, are not going to be in Diablo 4 until third season. Them so they decided to milk those, the battle passes with the the free with the with the skips from the battle pass. I guess before they get ranked and stuff properly. Yes, yeah. They can make online free to play. I mean, they can, but they will do it. But they will do it later. They still gonna first farm some sales. But yeah, I don't think they're gonna like farm it by increasing the price of original game too much. It's gonna be probably like eighty bucks or seventy bucks for sure. But yeah, I doubt they're gonna go for like hundred bucks or something. They're gonna make this the separate free to play later, probably. Yeah. But maybe they're not gonna. Maybe they did it for Red Dead Redemption just because it was like that unsuccessful, so they decided to do a separate one. And GTA Online still being bought and stuff, so maybe they will just like make a reasonable price and do it that way. Not to mention they probably just like GTA 5, they're gonna sell GTA 6 like multiple times again too. Ubisoft lays off dozens among its customer service department. And these guys too. And these guys too. Yes, he's the USC. Now, one day, one day. I mean, yeah, they probably can outsource it to someone to deal with all the spaghetti code there and everything. Or like remaking it from the beginning. And it's still gonna sell really well, too. Capcom described the performances of both Monster Hunter and Resident Evil as significant as it delivered record high net sales. Let's see under so I see. The Everspace's Steam launch. No complaints about 61,000 copies sold at the hefty $40 lead price during launch week. Busting the myth that games in early access should be cheap. In fact, I would argue that the exact opposite if devs don't want to leave money on the table. Well, I mean, not everything's gonna sell that way. Not everything's gonna sell that way for 40 bucks. You still need to have something very solid. Eh?
Mm. And the Bandai Namco full year sales they hit seven point three billion dollars. Um, Dead by Daylight and Guardians of the Galaxy now fully compatible with Steam Deck. It's pretty impressive how they kind of still optimizing stuff for that when we have still new releases that are not optimized even for the for the full fledged PC. Ah, the zombie read that the game. I see. You know, it was apparently pretty good. Huh? FIFA 23 became a best-selling title in the history of the franchise to help publisher EA deliver record bookings in the fourth quarter. Yes, as they prepare to ditch the franchise. Well, next year will be interesting. Well, not even next year. I guess end of this year will be interesting to see how that will go. Fully renaming and everything. Nick Merckx and Tim the Tapman operators coming to Warzone. Them son. Is the dock there already? Or are they skipping the dock and going straight for those? Huh? What is this? What is this? PlayStation Plus game catalog getting 23 new games. Not bad. Oh, no, the bad. Might be pony, might be. Not sure, not sure. Microsoft's purchase of Activision Blizzard to be approved by a European Union. And before it's also like everyone's saying, oh yeah, it's going to be approved. And then like, nope. FaZe Clan founders are selling their shares amidst financial collapse. Them sound a bit too late to sell them already. Oof. I'm not sure what they even expected with that shit. <clears throat> Why would you need shares of that garbage even? Like what they even do nowadays, huh? Now, Warner Brothers wants more profitable worlds after Hogwarts Legacy earns $1 billion. Damn, son. They just should release the, the Justice League. Suicide Squad. Easy. Easy profitable worlds there. Total War Warhammer 3 got the roadmap, I see. And Minecraft might get the uh, animals and textures eh, from Sonic the Hedgehog, them son. Time for Minecraft to farm some crossovers too. Mm. More from Everspace stuff. The Game Pass deal did not hurt our performance on Steam when comparing two almost identical sales beats. Interesting. I guess that's part of the early access though. Like, it's just kind of, like, not super hype release, and it's kind of, like, more stretched out. And, I mean, 40 bucks also. So, 
people kind of more likely to get that rather than play on Game Pass. Uh, Game Freak and Private Division are working on the new action adventure IP. Yeah, that's the Pokemon developers. Huh? But Private Division, though. Not Nintendo and everything, so that, that shouldn't be Pokemons or something, I would assume. Simuka of SC. Damn, Torchlight. Haven't heard that in a while already. Especially the Infinite one. The release of Mobile Warzone is delayed. Um, the App Store page mentions 1st of November. Now the new release is moved closer towards the next the next uh, main game part. The next Call of Duty then. According to Tom Henderson, the new game that will replace FIFA will be shown in the middle of July at the EA Sports FC. We'll see then how that will go. Oh yeah, the, uh, the Honkai Star Rail got some. Some anime, the short anime stuff. Now people asking for more. I'm gonna pump some probably at some point. I, th I think that that video already has like the, like the Hoyo Hoyoverse anime or something studio there. So I guess they're already preparing to pump that shit. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Considering the fan base and everything, they sure should pump more of that there. People would love that. Alright, load more. There we go. EACU Andrew Wilson says the publisher will be investing more heavily in games as a platform. So not games as a service, but games as a platform. Aren't you kind of like late to, to, to that? Wasn't that like dreams and all those that are kind of being closed now and everything? I think even like the Roblox and everything is still kind of like getting the big revenues, but also like losing a bunch of money. So there's still like no profits or some shit. Kind of debatable. Kind of debatable. Not sure about lots of appeal of that. Okay, they're kind of nice, like the creative stuff, I guess, if, if that's exactly what they mean, I'm not sure. Like the ones where you can like build games upon like games and stuff, like the creative modes and stuff. I mean, I think it's kind of nice, but it's better for like some very specific games and specific audiences. For that creativity, like kids, for example, when there's like plenty of time. Because, you know, when you're like adult person coming back home from work, it's kind of hard to find time. To go and start making some like you know levels or something the maps for some other game in creative mode eh? and you just probably want to like play something and then just chill <clears throat> i mean it's kind of debatable obviously people still find time but yeah i think like a lot a lot of those are not that super good eh? mm, yeah, exactly bleak exactly Mm -hmm. Epic Games Store planning to give away eight free games um, during their sale. The start is planned on 18th of May. So there's going to be some sale on Epic. We'll see. There will be some... If they will bring... Like, I'm, I'm waiting for them to bring back coupons. Get the coupons back, man. <laughs> Maybe I'll consider getting something. Maybe. Not like I really need much, though, stuff, but we'll see. 
you got time, just no motivation, or or that, yeah. Like I think like why like the creativity, right, and like the user generated content as it's called, right, is being a thing is mostly like mods and everything. I think that's the thing when you like you know really like the game and you want to like do something for the game for the community and stuff, and that's when people go and make like mods and stuff. Total conversions and everything. You kind of can't really force someone to like something that you just release, right? Like if you make it right here, there's a tool set for you to make, you know, your own game on the base of our game. But like, why? Like if I really want to make a game and, uh, you know, benefit from it and stuff, then probably better to just learn the engine or something, I guess. And if you all want to just kind of like casually make something, then you probably will do it for something you like. <laughs> and you kind of want, I guess, to do it for people, so someone will actually play your shit. So that's why people make maps for, you know, CS and stuff, for example. And not, and not for some random obscure game that no one cares about. See, so yeah, I'm not sure if you can really force it. That seems kind of more of like, you know, this like metaverse dream again to me. Which is, again, like, if, if it's for kids, then maybe. Like, something like Fortnite got their creative mode, right? And people do that. I can see that. Like, Fall Guys getting that, too. And, like, the, the target audience is kind of, like... Because, like, kids, yeah, for sure. Like, when you have so all, all the time... Like, I back in the day had a lot of time, right? And I still was spending a lot of time, like, outside with friends. And nowadays, looking at, like, <laughs> even how my, how my brother was growing up, for example... And you just, like, sit at the PC all day, every day. So, like, you have time, I guess, if you want to create something like that. To try yourself as a content creator for some game as a platform. It might be kind of cool, even. Good entrance into, like, you know, game dev and stuff, in a way. Through some visual editors and everything. A big update, Secrets of Gloomrot for Vampire Survival The Rising. I got a fresh trailer. 17th of May gonna be the release of the update. And it's free, just the update, apparently. Pretty good, eh? According to the narrative director of Spider-Man 2, developers want to make the new game the best game of the studio. Is there actually some studio that is making a new game and they don't want to make it the best game of the studio? Just like, yeah, let's make some shit, you know. Kinda doubt it. Kinda doubt it. <laughs> Arcane. I mean, I guess. Well, I mean, maybe they also were hoping that that's gonna be good. It's like it was kind of like aware, maybe, right? They're like, well, we're gonna make the best, the best game we ever made, and then during development, you know, they were becoming aware. Well, that even has a name. The the of the Pokemon creators game, the Project Bloom. Eh? Not earlier than April 2025, so we don't know shit still, I guess, all right. True pony, true. A new Dragon Age and Skate will be out not earlier than April 2024. Oh yeah, and Hollow Knight Silk Song delayed by Team Cherry. Yeah, it was supposed to be out first half of this year, but now it's delayed. Still no Silk Song, eh? I guess this summer again everyone's gonna be waiting for some trailers and announcements, probably. Just like, just like previous years. Potentially Ubisoft moved Assassin's Creed Mirage from August to October. Also, developers could delay Assassin's Creed Nexus for VR.
equipment, which is still pumping it. Guest star streamers and guests have more control over their audio settings. Musicians and all Twitch audio files on web can now disable or enable settings like eco cancellation, noise suppression, and auto gain control. Bro, they're pushing this so hard. And musician stuff too. I don't know, whenever I was checking like the front page, it's always pu pushing these music streams. I don't know, maybe they know something we kind of as plebs don't really know, but I, I, is it like really that popular? Like obviously some people do watch that. But like by pushing it for me, for example, I don't watch that. <laughs> it's always like a bunch of music streams on plays on the, on the the first the, the first the, the main page. And then pony then. So like trying to push like the podcasts and like music and stuff on Twitch, like bro. If you want to push something that is actually you know like doing well on your platform, just push you know all the like drama and all those like kind of like shows that uh, with with the big streamers that are sort of like rip off from like the TV shows or stuff, or invent something on your own. That would be good <laughs> if they want to like push something popular. Why are you pushing that stuff? Alright, let's see what else. A Nintendo's ongoing post-launch support for Mario Kart 8 appears to have paid off, as the six-year-old racer continues to dominate Nintendo Switch's sale chart. The sun still pumping. A video game streaming viewership continues to fall. I mean, not false, not even false. What else do you have to say about that? Is something else on the rise or is it just in general? Everyone's touching the grass now. Total viewership has fallen 16% year over year. Numbers while ending a run of six straight quarters with a loss. Still far below and nearly 9 billion hours of watched back in 2021. Twitch has seen a 4% increase in market share from 70 to 74% year over year, while YouTube has risen for 13 to 15%. Facebook is the only major platform to see a decline. Held 9% market share. In quarter 1, 2023, that number fell just 3%. Oof. That fall puts it behind South Korea's Africa TV platform. Well, I mean, they removed also like the partnership or whatever, I think, on Facebook. So I guess they're just going to be kind of like wrapping it up or something soon. Gonna pull the mixer. Mixer sends streamers to to Facebook, and Facebook now is just gonna pull the mixer too. Something tells me they're not gonna send their viewers anywhere else though. And the content creators. Sony has launched a new incubator program to identify and support emerging developers across India. Imagine one day they could have something like this here. No. Can't even imagine nowadays. Huh? I really doubt it. Tom Henderson says that new Call of Duty will be announced in the beginning of August. In confirming the November release date with early access to campaign and two stages of beta test in October. Time to farm time to farm more yachts for Bobby then. And more Call of Duty. 
Horizon Forbidden West sold 8.4 million copies worldwide. Eh? I mean, that's pretty solid. Eh? Not the blockbuster hit, I guess, for Sony especially, but you know, considering it's only one platform especially, not, not bad. Eh? Not bad at all. Eh? Yeah, if if you if you look and put it in perspective, yeah, that is indeed quite uh, quite interesting. Totally not bad, eh? Yeah, it's just like a lot of people are always like Horizon is kind of you know like semi dead franchise, but it's doing good. I think it's doing really good. It was like part of the bundle though, I guess. So like, until God of War, a new bundle happened. There's something people were probably farming that. So, like, that attributes a lot of those sales to people, like, buying the bundle, especially since, you know, the accessibility of PlayStation was a problem until kind of recently. And people were probably getting whatever bundle they could get, right? So, they probably sold all of them, depending how much they had of those. That did kind of boost the game. But still, still, I think Horizon is always a little under the Raiders, but it's doing well. Six years later, PUBG is still massively valuable. Oh yeah, and the whole franchise of Horizon sold 32 million. So like the first game actually pumped quite well then, including PC and everything. Now that is already like quite impressive, I would say. That is already quite impressive. This is basically like 20 mil alone for the first game. I don't know, maybe they separately count DLC sales or something, but still. That's a lot. Oh yeah, there was a VR also. The VR, I guess, didn't really sell like, like maybe a couple of million, maybe. Maybe. Starfield rated mature features post six dialogue. Then son. Insane. And the Nintendo's next console won't launch before spring twenty twenty four. So, I mean, it's not guaranteed that it's going to launch after, especially right after, but yeah. Until then. Let's see, stay away, see. How so? How so? Nintendo Switch just topped 125 million lifetime sales. But Nintendo seems to think the console has peaked. Damn, son. Sales down 22%. Well, maybe then, past 2024, there will be a new one. Now, they, if they say it's, it peaked already, so now maybe they will start thinking about something new. We already see Starfield does them some around. No, like on the internet. <laughs> or outside of the somewhere. Ash, you're right in. Oh, welcome back to the dungeon. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Five years indeed. Thank you, man. Thank you. I wish you all the best. I should need that. Should need that. Thank you, sir. Oh, five years. Feels good. A System Shock remake for PC Gun Gold and will be out in time, 30th of May. That is nice. Let's see what I see. Man, we had that stuff back in the day too. Not anymore, probably. Let's see, Steve. All right. Half the stuff, yeah. Half of nothing. Kick. 
Age of Wonders 4 surpasses 250,000 sales in 4 days to become the fastest selling entry in the franchise. Not bad. Age of Wonders 4 is nice. I finished my run. I'm gonna do some more. I will do some more. Well, actually also next week, I think. Next week, I'm gonna message them actually. We'll see how it will go. Um, maybe, I, I don't, I don't think you're probably allowed to stream it early though. They can send you the, the access so you can like prepare a video, but I'd rather do it on stream. Uh, Songs of Conquest campaign gonna be next week, I think. So we're gonna play that for sure. The Loth campaign should be out next week, a year after release. So gonna be doing that, gonna be doing that. Hey Levis, yeah, game is really good. Game is really good, eh? Saints Row Remake is expanded by the DLC Heist and the, the Heist and the Hazardous. Is it like completely new or is it the remake of the old DLC? What? Doom 2 RPG has been unofficially ported to PC. Damn, son. Time to play some Doom RPG. Let's see. Uh, what else do we have? Um, Street Fighter 6 Open Beta strikes out later this month. Open Beta, that's nice. That is nice. Potentially, the expected uh, a new a uh, PlayStation event will be between twenty second and twenty eighth of May. Already time. Is it gonna be time to pog? Eh? That one's gonna be massive, probably. I would assume it will be like closer to June with all the other announcements, but you never know. <laughs> Soon already, the degeneracy man, gonna stock up on all the, on all the snackies and all that stuff. Already like less than a month basically, and we're gonna start eating good, dude. And we're gonna get all the announcements and shit. The degeneracy, gonna get all the day offs and stuff now <clears throat> before it starts, and then and then it's gonna be insane. Then we going in. Gonna watch it all. Less than a month for first show. Well, I mean, apparently Sony might also happen even earlier, so... Already a little bit, a little bit left. On 19th, uh, from 19th and 22nd of May, gonna be the open beta for Street Fighter, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and PC. Eight characters, six maps, a uh, few modes, and crossplay. Nice for demo, especially for beta. That's good. Yeah, I think I saw it somewhere, Steve. Too. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, technically there is this like pre-order early start, right? So maybe that stuff too. Activision says uh, PC gaming is beating console gaming. Damn, son. The Activision. The, the, the Call of Duty enjoyer is moving to the PC already now.
Ah, I see, Steve. I see. All right. Classic. Classic. Sonic Frontier sells 3.5 million copies, six months after release. And here everyone was thinking it's gonna be Garbo. All right, then getting to uh, where we stopped last time, I think. It's actually making it the best-selling, a uh, best-selling 3D Sony game ever, I see. So other ones apparently maybe were even better. See what I see. Time to grind. IBM is planning to replace almost 8,000 workers to, with AI and automated systems in next five years. Them son, they just like go ham there. <laughs> Not trying to beat around the bush there. Like, all right, 8,000 of you guys are gone in the next five years. Start packing. The AI is coming. It's what a, what, one, one way to announce, dude. Starbreeze CEO suggests a payday 3 will launch in the second half of 2023. Damn, son, already going. Damn, Steve, damn. A brutal. Redfall became a leader in popularity among games in a Russian Game Pass. Them, son. Well, I mean, it's free, why not? And next after Redfall goes Atomic Heart and Mortal Kombat. That's kind of funny because officially kind of Atomic Heart wasn't even available here on Russian Game Pass. They got exclusivity for the Pipiga story here. But, you yeah, know, that didn't stop anyone. Looks like Fortnite will get another Dragon Ball crossover. Damn, son. Another one. And another one. Alright, let's see. The Asus ROG Ally to retail for 700 bucks launches June 2023. Is this the Steam Deck killer? Why oh, she's like Steam Deck nowadays? I mean, it depends, I guess, on uh, the memory and stuff, though. Depends on uh, the memory. This one has. Uh... 500, uh, 500 gigs this one has. Uh, NVMe SSD. But you ordered has already started even till. Interesting. Mm, not sure, not sure. I mean, technically, if there will be something that's better in terms of price performance, then why not? 
a Y Note. Still seems like the same kind of hardware. Some Ryzen and some AMD GPU. Quite a crazy person with that stuff, I see. <laughs> I see. No, for me, it's kind of more like I'm. I'm interested more from like the, the utility. You know, like if you can employ it in uh, streaming, there will be some like portable device like that. That would easily handle encoding and everything, so you could use it as a streaming PC, basically of sorts. In a small portable format, that would be beautiful. And then I would actually consider getting one. Instead of buying, you know, like another chunk that you need to put somewhere. And just have this like small device. That would just handle encoding. And I mean, you know, if you're living somewhere, might as well. Maybe take it with you. But I'm not really like the, the portable gamer. 